we got over 200 eggs. The eggs need a lot of caring. Oh. If the egg is white, it's dead. The eggs are very good at hiding. The eggs are delicate, so you have to be really gentle. The eggs are so small that it, it's smaller than your finger. Now we get all get to release our own fish at the end. Maybe it was part white, part orange. <laughs> <laughs> The alvins have a yolk sac so we don't need to feed them. You need to use the turkey beaster to know if they are dead or alive. Don't be fooled by them because they are very good at pretending to be dead. If you suck up the good eggs then, um, then you can pull them up. Some fish die because cause one was stuck together with another guy. When you are sucking up the fish, make sure to do it from head on because if you do it from the bottom way down, you might rip the yolk sack. This morning the temperature was 12 degrees. We are checking if there are any of the fish are dead. And we know by squishing the turkey base to next to okay, And if they wriggle, and if they wriggle, we see alive. And if they don't, we keep them as a suspect for 10 minutes. And if they don't do anything, Till then, we like we drain it down the side. They are de developing to have a black stripe behind their back. Carefully, the yolk sac is a bit smaller. On Friday, we have to gradually step the temperature down so when we come back on Monday it's not too high. When you see a fish that's not moving, squish the turkey baster next to it and then um, if they don't move then um, hold the turkey baster and put it next to them and they'll get sucked up and then put them in the jug for 10 minutes then let the temperature rise and if they don't move they're dead. In the last two weeks the fish have mouths now and if they like, um, if you look at them their mouths are open. <laughs> They have developed a little fin at the end of their tail. The alphas had changed and stretched and they're, they're moving a lot in the tank. The alphas have nearly used up all of its yolk sack. This is last week and we're releasing the fish today and it's quite sad because we've had them for quite a long time now. Yeah, and last week we are having the elephants. We have learned lots about fish. This is the last day checking the temperature. Their skin colour has been changing from peachy white to black and greyish. They're jumping over to the tank on the island. Things are turning into a fry now. Um, the f the alvins have been evolving every time. They've gotten more uh, adventurous and energetic. I'm very thankful that we got to have an opportunity to check to have alvins in our class.
Right, just take the first pop, boys and girls. about this, getting our tiny little eggs to this stage to be able to release them into this river. And what I want to do is just run over three or four big developments in the fish that you have seen occurring in your classroom, which is going to allow these fish to survive in this huge river. They've come out a tank about that size and they're going into this huge river. Okay. So first of all, if everyone holds up your fish, just about eye level. I've got too high. You want to see it? The first thing that I notice is a change in colour. So, remember I brought you... Remember I brought you 200 orange eggs? And now these fish have changed colour. And what colour are they? Grey. Grey. Grey brownish. What colour is that water? Brown. Brown, right. You can't really see it, but the stones in the bottom of there are kind of brown as well, right? And what happens is, these fish will come up out of the gravels, remember it all happens underneath the stones. So they will bounce up between the stones, come to the top of the stones, the bottom of the river as you know it, and they have to blend in. If they come up bright orange, every predator in this part would be thinking, great, it's lunchtime. Okay? So this is probably their only defence at this point in the life cycle. What they're going to do, we won't see it today because the water's murky with the rain. But what they'll do is they'll go down between the stones. So if you imagine you were all stones in the river, if I'm a trout, I would be right down here. And that's giving me protection from that flow. I'm not going to get swept way downstream. When I'm moving, that's that's when I'm at my most uh, well critical stage because I'm, I'm being seen. When they go in the stones and they stop, very very difficult to see that they basically look like twigs off of a tree so if, if that's what we think hopefully that's what predators think and that's one of the things that will help keep them alive secondly if we hold the, the fish slightly above us you'll be able to see now that they have all their fins so remember when they first hatched out they were basically just a little orange ball with a straight line attached to it after a week 
they managed to get that big fin at the back, the caudal fin, so they could propel themselves through the water. But remember, when they stopped, they went in their sides. Yeah, they didn't have the pectoral fins or the pelvic fins, equivalent to our arms and legs, to hold them upright in the water. So whenever these they stopped swimming, they would go on their sides. And it looked as though they were dead. That's why we had to use our turkey baster to check they were alive, yeah? Now they have got all their fins. They've got a, a big fin in the back as well, the dorsal fin. They've got the anal fin underneath. They've even in between the caudal fin right at the back and the dorsal fin, on right on the, in the middle of their back, on the top of their body, you look almost at the, the back of them, there's a tiny little fin there. And that's what we call the adipose fin. And if any of you are inspired to get into freshwater biology, there's a line of research for you because we do not know what that is for. Okay? So that's something for you to aim for in the future. Come back in 20 years time, tell me what that's for. Okay? So, as I say, they're going to go down between the stones. If we did see them, what they would do is they would face upstream. And this is us coming into the energy efficiency part of the life, the life uh, strategy now. If they're facing upstream, they, they don't need to do it very much to get their oxygen. You see the white water coming in at the weir? That's yeah. equivalent to your air stone in the tank. Bring them oxygen directly to them. When it rains like this, all the little stones in the bottom of the river are moved. And the food that they'll be eating is is the sludge from there. So it floats down in the water column. So they're looking upstream, looking for the, this food to come towards them. Okay? And when it comes towards them, they will swim up from the stones, grab it in their mouth and get back down to the stones. Because what they don't want to do is waste a lot of energy swimming against all that water. That takes a lot of energy out of them. Now, that brings me on to another well, two developments. The first one being the mouth, okay? So if you look very, very closely, you see a tiny little mouth just opening and closing. The cool thing about a trout's mouth is there are teeth everywhere. So there are teeth on the lips, teeth on the tongue, and teeth on the roof of the mouth. Teeth where teeth should be. And that allows them, when they swim up to get that food item, to be able to hold on to it. Imagine if they didn't have those teeth, that food item could slip out. And if that happens, they've had a double whammy. One, they've used up all that energy swimming through the water to get the food item. And two, they've had no reward. So if that happened a lot, they could actually starve. Okay? So that's a big development which will help keep them alive. All right? and, the, and the final big development is probably the eyes. You have a look at the fish now. Remember when I brought the, the eggs, the eyes were Two little black dots, yeah? And now these eyes are popping out their heads. If we had eyes the size of this on our heads, we'd have eyes the size of basketballs on us, okay? And what that allows these fish to do is <coughs> they, they can, it gives them a greater range of vision. They can basically see everywhere far behind them, all at the one time. So they'll be looking up into these trees to make sure there aren't any aerial predators coming for them. They'll be looking at the bankings to see if there's maybe mink or otter about here might be coming for them, or anglers. They'll be looking down into the deeper water to make sure no bigger fish are coming as well. The, the eyes makes them very, very weary animals, okay? And it makes them very, very difficult to catch because as I say, they can practically see everywhere, apart from behind them, okay? And when they're older, when they become adults, the brain's the size of a pea, but they can out, still outsmart a lot of anglers, okay, a lot of humans. So what we'll do is we'll get into our pairs. Okay. Right, turn around right. face Gemma just now. Should I put it? Face down, that's it. Look at the camera. Okay. You just look at this way, guys. So that's really awkward. There we go. There you go. Great. There you go. Put your fish in them. 
Hamilton, he's done a fantastic job. You should be proud of what you have done here, boys and girls. There's not many people in the world have seen what you have just seen the last five, six weeks. Remember, this all happens underneath the stones at the bottom of a river. And, I mean, he's took that responsibility on. He's done a fantastic job. You should be proud of what he's done. So give yourself...